Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. And let me take this opportunity to wish you all a very happy Easter. I know that uh, it is a sign of spring and fun things to come. Nice warm weather, no more snow, maybe. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to wish you all a very happy Easter. Today's tutorial is keeping with the theme of Easter. And I'm using the same stone as I did in my last tutorial. And it's an oval stone, the large size that I received from the Happy Dotting Company. So I painted it all uh, with a couple of layers of paint. So the first one was brush strokes and then I uh, sponged those brush strokes out and then I let it dry and then I did the same application. So brushed it on, sponged it to get a nice even layer and the color I used was patina. So now what I'm doing is I'm drawing some lines on after I've drawn on an oval there by using a stencil and I'm going to make it look like the old paneling kind of walls that used to be uh, very popular in the 70s and 80s. Um, so I'm just doing that and we're going to be making uh, some wood grains in these panels. Uh, it's going to look really really neat and this, this is a fun tutorial that I wanted to do. The last one I did was very serious and about um, what Easter is all about uh, but there is the other side of things of what Easter represents and that's the Easter Bunny. So I wanted to do something fun and I didn't want to do an Easter egg because Easter eggs are done all the time so and I'm sure you did it in your own house um, decorating Easter eggs. So I just wanted to do this as something fun and easy to do. To make the dark grooves in the paneling, what I did was I took the color of patina and I added a little bit of brown to it. I know it sounds weird, but that's how I got this color. And I applied it with um, thick brush strokes so that it has that wide look. Then what I did was I used the same paint, added a little bit more brown, and then I added water to make it very, very thin. And I used the same brush, but very lightly, and I made all of these wood grains. Now, if you think about how wood grains go, there's like knots in them, and some years they, they grew bigger or faster than other years, so the rings are actually wider. There's, so nothing is... Um, like right close together or exact or it's really haphazard so it's all over the place. So that's what I've done here is I've put on the wood grain all the way around the rock. I threw in a few knots and um, some squiggly lines and it turned out really good. I'm very pleased with it. So now what I'm going to do is not the normal kind of a uh, Easter bunny that you would normally see. This one is going to be going through a hole or stuck in a hole in the paneling. So it's just like I said, it's just a fun tutorial that I'm doing. I uh, just sketched it all out. Um, so this is going to be the backside of the Easter bunny. So I just uh, put on some white paint and I do two coats of this and just to get uh, a base coat down and I just do around the outlines of what I just drew. And once this is dry, then I will go back in with my eraser to erase any of the pencil marks that are still visible. Because you don't want to see that once it's resined, it stays there forever. So you do want to get rid of those. And um, I just use a little, uh, like a white uh, soft eraser that usually get math sets and things like that. Um, it, I find it works the best. Uh, and that's for pencil. If I'm using my General's Charcoal Pencil, I can use the same thing, but I find a wet cloth or a damp cloth does the same. So here I am just uh, putting on some more white paint just to make an even coverage. So, and I'm using my blending brush and it just helps so much better to get that nice uniform coverage of the entire uh, outline and the insides because I will be doing some blending and I again will be using some of the brown paint which is I think it's called country maple um, but I will be using that 
and uh, there it is right there actually so uh, just where I think that there's going to be uh, some shadows just to give a 3d effect or uh, some definition as to where the uh, bunny is going to be shadowed so you'll also see that I've got some extra pencil marks I felt that the um, the bunny needed to be a little bit more round instead of oval but the hole is going to be oval so I drew on some extra lines on there I'm defining the the bunny tail by using a little bit of the brown and just adding some more shadows and it's just really using uh, your blending brush and going in and just dabbing away until you get the right blend that you like the like right shadow or whatever the effect is that you're going for it's all done with just a blending brush um, so now I'm going in and I'm sketching on his paws so I've got to do the little pink pads um, so yes I will be using pink in this as well and uh, I'm just adding in the outline of the paws because I need to know where they are so I can do some blending and some shadowing on that as well so and that's what I'm doing now I'm just sort of dabbing it and making sure that I've got all of my colors done so when I was doing the uh, sketching on for the bunny's paws I noticed that my bunny was a little bit oval and he needed to be a little bit round so I sketched on um, some spots on his hips there and now I'm just going over it with black paint I intended to do the black paint anyways because that's going to be the hole that he's going through in the wall so this was the great opportunity that I could uh, make the, the bunny's bottom more round <laughs> rather than oval so his basket and his eggs and everything are already on the other side and uh, he's just squeezing through uh, so he can get into the house and start hiding all of the Easter eggs that he has if you like this tutorial, please give me that thumbs up. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I do a lot of tutorial paintings. And if you don't want to miss when I post those, hit that bell notification and you will be told when I post up a new video. I'd love hearing from you. So leave me a comment in the comment sections below and let me know what you did for Easter or what you have as an Easter tradition um, or even let me know what you liked about this tutorial or what maybe you didn't like about this tutorial. Um, I just I love reading the comments and I love reading about uh, my viewers and getting to know you better uh, so please leave me a comment below. Now I'm painting on the pink pads of the bunny's feet so I'm using uh, bubble gum uh, that's the name of the color of the pink and I will be using some of the brown to do some shading uh, with my blending brush and um, now the colors that I used they will all be listed in the description below so if you're interested in what brands or what the color name is they're all listed below now keep in mind that these are the colors that I have available to me in my stash you don't need to go out and buy these colors. Uh, you can use colors that you have in your own stash and just use the same techniques, the same blending um, by adding, like if you wanted to do the paneling to be brown so it looks more realistic, um, just add a darker color brown to it. Um, or if you want the bunny to be a brown bunny, you can change that up too. So. I'm just showing you the techniques with the colors that I have available to me um, and I urge you to uh, just let your own creativity take you to where wherever you end up. What I'm doing now is I'm actually adding a little bit of white it's like dry brushing um, with my blending brush that I have that's actually been pretty destroyed so it works really well by adding what makes it look fuzzy almost so what I do is I dip the paintbrush into the paint and then I wipe it off or dab it off on I have a glass palette but you could also use a uh, paper towel just to get the excess paint off and then just dab it on the edges and it gives it that fuzzy effect so you can even use uh, your fine lining brush 
um, like the brush that I'm using right now, you could use that uh, and do little swipes to give it the appearance of hair. I didn't go that far. I just wanted the bunny to look fuzzy. So, and I'm just outlining the, uh, the bunny's paws uh, with my um, outlining brush. And I'm just going to uh, use that to do my blending as well. So I paint on and then I will bring in my uh, blending brush, a different one than the, the one that's pretty wrecked and uh, just blend in that uh, darker color. So what I did was, I think I explained before, was I used uh, the same pink, but I added a little bit of brown to it. And that way it gives it like a, a little bit of a shadow. And that's what my uh, idea was to really get the, uh, the paw pads to really look like uh, paw pads um, and uh, give it a little bit of shading. I left space up on the top so that I could put on the sentiment Happy Easter and I had gone in with a pencil first with my own handwriting I wrote out in cursive uh, Happy Easter. Now my biggest problem and if you've watched any of my other videos I've said this before I'm the worst to follow a template so even though I have penciled it on it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be painting it the same way that I penciled it. So what ends up happening is my spacing ends up being a little off because I go way off track or um, I decide I don't like the curve of one thing so I put a different curve in it and it's just all over the place. But the final product is always done very very neatly and nice uh, and it looks a lot better once it's dry I erase all of that excess pencil marks because you see a lot of it and unfortunately you can't see here because uh, of maybe the video quality or the lighting but trust me the pencil marks are there and I am following the best that I can but I don't always follow what I've put on there. I'm using the true color of the brown that I've been using throughout this tutorial for like the shading and the blending of the different colors and I just thought that if I used that without blending or combining with another color it would stand out even that much more and especially when it's on the back of the paneling and some of that color is in there so that's why I went with this and um, once it was dry I was thinking hmm it's kind of not popping as much as I wanted to so what I ended up doing was I put uh, gold paint over top of it, but just a thin line so that you still see the brown, but the gold just adds that a uh, little bit of shimmer to the letters so that after it's resined and you move the rock around, you can actually see the glitter of the gold that's inside of the brown. And again, I said before, but all the colors are listed below and uh, definitely check them out. Um, if you don't have the same colors, again, that's totally fine. Make it your own. Keep watching for the resin reveal of this one as well as the one that I did off camera. And remember folks, life is what you make it, so get creative.